Welcome everybody to episode 14 of the Golden Ram Buzz Podcast with Chris, Damon, and Sal. Yeah. Sal, the Rams ended their six game losing streak oh, oh, by oh, defeating oh, the Raiders, oh. Sal. <laughs> Boy, we needed that win. What a game that was yeah. to win 17 to 16 against the Raiders. You came this close to winning the game, baby, but you lost. <laughs> now against all odds, huh? Wasn't that nice? Yeah. Sal, the Rams acquired Baker Mill for that Tuesday. Mm-hmm. 48 hours later, He's going on a game-winning drive with no timeouts left, a minute 30 on the clock. What would you think of that? First of all, when the Rams picked him up, I was kind of excited. But, you know, and then when they were talking about the possibility of him playing, I mean, in all fairness, it's difficult to come on, um, you know, for anybody. And then it usually takes over a week to, you know, 10 days to even learn the system. And so the fact that he was able to, to come in and do what he did, I love the energy and I could see that it was different. I told uh, my daughter, Bree, I said, you know what? They're gonna win this game. I said, he's different. He's a difference maker. And I know that um, they struggled a little bit at um, at the beginning, but once he got into a rhythm, you know, I like the way he gets in and out of the huddle. He's quick, he's very decisive. Um, You know, he's a natural thrower of the football, which is nice. And and you see that right away. And um, I mean, it couldn't have happened, you know, against a better team perfect team yeah i mean raider nation was uh again out in full force you could hear it and and see it um but you know it's never over till it's over and i think that this victory for the rams will really um it kind of took away the sting of a lot of those losses that six losses in a row was brutal you know It, it it was um the rams needed a a a shot in the arm they needed to be exciting and you know even for diehard Ram fans, you know, the offense wasn't really clicking and they weren't, you know, they weren't really putting together drives or anything. And when Baker Mayfield came, played behind this pretty much same offensive line and was able to move the ball. And, and uh, you know, when players believe that you can win, you know, they, they play, um, it's like they play at another level. You saw that, um, I mean, Ben Skoranek was, was yeah, carrying. Yeah, like 89 yards, leader receiver. Yeah, uh, Big yeah. Redfield's getting it to everybody. 2-2 two, two yeah, out. Yeah. Ben Skoranek, hey, Jacob, yeah, yeah. you get in the game. And um, you got to remember, Baker Mayfield's through, been through a lot of adversity. Yeah. From walking out of Oklahoma, didn't mm-hmm. think he was going to do it. He went to, he went to Texas A&M first yeah. or something. Mm-hmm. Texas Tech or something. Transferred to Oklahoma. Then he gets drafted by the Cleveland Browns. We know how much disarray they've been in. Mm. They are. I think Baker Mayfield has had like seven coaches in like four or five years. Yeah. Could be five to seven mm. coaches. In four or five years, he's been in the NFL style. And now he's with Nick Vay. He's like, okay, this is nothing. I'll do this in two days. Mm. And it's crazy. As you saw on the field, they, Matthew Stafford was helping him do the plays. Mike yes. Cooper Cup was assisting him. But mm. I'm not going to lie, man. That Raider Nation was deep. From the tailgate, yeah. they're deep. We're partying with them, having a great time. To the stadium, <laughs> like, how a Raider, yeah. Yeah. like, but it was just they overtook. I'm not gonna lie, yeah. but like a Raider fan, I was always, I was talking during the game. We kept on saying, scoreboard, mm-hmm. scoreboard, scoreboard. And like in the game, I said, scoreboard. He's like, oh, but there's yeah. no like, there's no drama. It's no, it's games. all in fun. Great games. game, I mean, fun. Mm-hmm. And the Raider fans are like, and then there's a guy next to me saying, don't worry, don't worry, Demond. The Raider, Raiders are going to do Raider, you know what. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, Raiders, the, Raiders, yeah. the Raiders always blow leads. They've blown like five or six leads there by double digits. This is nothing. Don't he, he was so calm. And I even recorded the guy. I'm like, man, this is awesome. But now let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. Say Baker Mayfield goes on a five-game winning streak and the Rams finish the season 8-9. and nine. Yes. Is there going to be a contra- uh, quarterback controversy with Matthew Stafford next year? Is Baker Mayfield signed beyond this year, you think? Or what do you think is going to happen? Well, I mean, that's really interesting because... You know, I think that if he continues, I mean, the hard part is that he's, you know, he set the bar so high against the Raiders. I mean, what he did that game, that's not necessarily going to be the standard. But if he shows that he um, can move the, you know, move the team and, and, you know, make some plays here and there, definitely. But I think that, you know, the Rams have a lot of things they have to resolve at the end of the season because, you know, you look at Baker Mayfield 27, Matthew Stafford 36. And if the Rams, they're definitely going to have to rebuild that offensive line, right? So if you rebuild certain areas of the team, you know, would you rebuild the offensive line and then put a 36, 37-year-old quarterback behind that line? Or or if you have an opportunity for a 27-year-old that could come in and, and uh, do well. But, you know, when I see Coach McVay and Baker Mayfield, I kind of see like, it's like McVay has a new toy, right? <laughs> I mean, he was so pumped. You he saw him on the yeah, sidelines. Yeah. But I, I think that, you know, Coach McVay played quarterback too. Yeah, he did. And, and 
I think he kind of has that swag, and I think he sees himself in Baker, in Baker Mayfield. And I think that with that, he could really take the Rams' uh, offense to another level. And I think for anybody watching the game, you're thinking, you know, he, what he was able to do with a lot of the backups and, and um, you know, second and third string players. And then you think, wow, you add Cooper Cup. A running back, you know, um, you could see that the Rams offense could be pretty explosive. So I think it's exciting. But the Rams, um, you know, I think at the end of the year, you definitely have to give him an opportunity if he keeps winning. And you know what's crazy? Jared Goff, Matthew Stafford, and Baker Mayfield have what in common? Now, all number one draft picks, huh? Wow. Um, they are. Let me ask you a question. Allen Robinson's out. Cooper Cup's out. Mm -hmm. And Lance McCutcheon hasn't really played. The preseason all-star everybody wanted to see play mm -hmm. hasn't played. What do you think is going on with that? You know, a couple of people asked me about that, about, you know, the lack of, you know, um, playing time for McCutcheon, for Lance McCutcheon. But I said, you know, I think what is going on is that Skoranek, you know, is going to start. Skoranek's going to play because he earned that. But then also you look at the development of Tutu Atwell. It's hard to take Tutu Atwell off the field. I mean, he's killing it, you know, with that speed. Every week he looks better and better. So I could see that the Rams are probably thinking, you know, Tutu Atwell gives them the best option to win games, right? Because that speed is really, really tough to replace. And, and uh, I like uh, Lance McCutcheon, and I'm sure he'll get his opportunity. But, you know, I, I'd prefer to have both um, Tutu Atwell and uh, Ben Skronik as the receivers. And then you could kind of uh, interchange, you know, third receiver and, and players like that. Now the Rams' next opponent is the Green Bay Packers. Yes. Both teams are still mathematically alive, but we know the loser who loses exactly. this game will be Definitely. out. Definitely, yeah. Now, both, they both play on Monday night against each other. The temperature will be four degrees. Mm -hmm. How do you think this will affect the Rams? Well, I tell people this, and that's another advantage of having Baker Mayfield. Yes. You know, I mean, could you imagine Baker Mayfield playing in? I think it's, I think it, the... I think it's going to be like four degrees or something on Monday night, uh, December 19th. Um, so... When you look at that, you know, Baker Mayfield definitely is better suited for that Monday night. So he'll he'll be able to, I think, um, you know, uh, rally the, the offense and stuff. So that's a big advantage for him versus either John Wolford or uh, Perkins. Plus, well, a lot of these players play college in the snow. So I don't see what the big deal is all of a sudden. Like, I mean, you play college in the snow, you play in white. Like some people played in East Coast weather. Baker Mayfield came from Cleveland, Oklahoma. Weather's not like mm -hmm. sunny all the time. So. I mean, I'm looking for, I mean, I think the Rams, man, I want him to run the table, obviously. I want to yeah, eight and nine and definitely. just leave, like, going on a positive note, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, he's putting some juice into the team, so. Yeah, well, definitely. And then he has 11 days now to learn the really, playbook. Yeah, really yeah. grasp the, um, the offense. But another advantage is, you know, the direction for the, the Rams, the six losses in a row, I mean, even for diehard fans, yeah. it, it was tough. Yeah. You're watching a game, and I mean, you know, the offense is struggling. Defense uh, always played well. Defense always kept the Rams in the game, but, you know, you got to score points to be able to win some games. But now, with Baker Mayfield, you either love him or you hate him, but you're going to watch him. And so the Rams are actually, the fact that the Rams, you know, have a couple of, you know, more primetime games, I mean, it, it, now you can see what the Rams saw and also what McVay saw. Be able to have, um, you know, play on Thursday night and then now you're going to play on Monday night and then you're going to play on Christmas Day. Yeah. I mean, so you're giving Baker Mayfield a perfect opportunity, you know, for everyone else to, to kind of see what he's about also. But, but like I said, he, in all the years of being a Rams fan, I've never, the Rams have never had a quarterback that has that type of swag. Yeah. I mean, he, he's different. And if you can back it up, it's all good. I can't wait to the game. Let's talk about the games that we saw this past week. Mm -hmm. The Bills fought off the Jets 20 to 12. Mm -hmm. The Bengals beat the Browns 23 to 10. Now yeah. the Bengals look good because the team that usually loses the Super Bowl the next year doesn't make the playoffs. Yeah. The Bengals are I first place in their division. They're quietly. Quietly coming, coming yeah. around. Um, Definitely. The Lions beat the Vikings and they're yeah. now six and seven. And only one game behind the last playoff spot. Mm -hmm. You know, Jared Goff is a quarterback. Josh uh, Reynolds is a receiver. And they got Brad Holmes who used to be with the Rams. Yeah. So, do you think the Lions will make the playoffs? I actually think they have a good shot. And you know what? Um, you know, Dan Campbell has them playing really good football. I mean, I'm sure, you know, me personally as a you know diehard Rams fan, I'm happy for, you know, Jared Goff and to see him have success. Uh, 
to see what uh, you know Holmes is general <clears throat> general manager what he's been able to do with the um, the Lions as far as personnel and stuff. They're they're for real. They're gonna um, they remind me of the Rams when Vermeil took over. Mm. You know when Vermeil took over the Rams in '97. You know Vermeil said, you know what, we're not gonna win every game, but at the end of the game, you're gonna know you're in a dogfight. And so the Lions will push you to the brink, you know. Same thing when uh, they played the Bills on Thanksgiving. Yeah, they came. You know, I mean, it's not a fluke. They're doing it every, you know, every week. So they're definitely moving in the right direction. And, I mean, I'm happy for Goff. And so they have a good shot at making the playoffs. Now the team, to me, the best team in the NFL is looking kind of hurty nowadays. I hate to say it, but to me, in my own opinion, Mm -hmm. do not get mad at me, Eagle fans. The best team in the NFL are the San Francisco 49ers. They beat, they beat the brakes 35 to 7 off the Tampa Bay Buccaneers against the GOAT. Sal, they're for real. Yeah, as much as I uh, hate, <laughs> I hate to, to say, say it. Exactly. No, but you know what? When you have a great defense, you know. But, uh, you know, when Purdy, I thought he was managing games, but I saw the game against Tampa, and, um, you know, he's doing some things. Now, I'm not but, Go ahead. You know, the Eagles, I still think that. Um, I think the Eagles are the team to beat in the, um, you know, in the NFC right now. But also think about it: when you see Purdy go up against a defense like the Cowboys or the Eagles, if he can, you know, have that type of energy and be able to beat those teams, then, you know, I'll tip my hat. What he's doing now is pretty impressive. But until you face the strength, right? The pass rush of the Cowboys is pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, kind of reminds me. I'm not saying it's going to go in this direction. A guy named Tom Brady took over for a guy named Drew Bledsoe. I'm not saying he's going to go in that direction. Went on a winning streak, took him to the Super Bowl, mm-hmm. made his name. A guy named Nick Foles took over for a guy named Carson Wentz. That was hot, best record. Mm-hmm. Took him to that direction, took him to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Now, hey, I don't know, but I hate to admit it, but the <laughs> Niners, to me, are the best all-around team. Yeah, the Eagles have a better record, but the Niners are just physical. I'm just like, ooh, 30, you're a 35 to 0 on Tom Brady? Yeah. Come on, man. But, like, I, but I think... One of the big advantages is that the you know the Eagles are, still have the number one seed, so you'd have to go to yeah. Philadelphia. And Philadelphia playing in in Philly, you know, in that time of year, it's going to be pretty tough for you know West Coast teams to do that. I mean, the Niners proved it when they went to beat Green Bay last year. It could be done, but you know, with an experienced quarterback, you know, a lot of times it takes a while to learn to play the at the quarterback position. I mean, he is Mr. Irrelevant, and you know, sometimes you can get ahead of yourself. And he's playing well, and, and, you know, he's playing like a veteran, but I still, to me, experience matters, and I think it will, you know, down the road, you know, make a difference. Speaking of the Eagles, they win 48-22. to They beat the Giants 48-22. Yeah. My question is this. If the Eagles and Niners play today, who would, you, who would win and why? Um, if they play today, I would probably go, uh, I'd probably take the 49ers. I just like the way they're built. I mean... I don't see a weakness with the 49ers. I thought maybe with uh, Garoppolo going down, the quarterback position would be the weakness, but, you know, they keep, you know, keep on uh, um, doing what they're doing. So that's pretty impressive. Um, the renters, the Chargers, beat the Dolphins 23-17. <laughs> he yeah. looked terrible. He was like yeah. 10 for 50. I don't know what he was doing, but he looked terrible. Yeah, that was kind of tough to watch. You know, um, you know, the more you watch the Dolphins, I like the Dolphins, but the more you watch, you just see that there's, you know, the quarterback position yeah. is kind of off a little bit. You know, I like Tua, but he's not that guy. I, I just don't think he is. I think, you know, that's why it was interesting when, when uh, Baker Mayfield was waived, the Rams were the only team that put in a claim, right? So then you see McVay puts in a claim for him, and then you saw what he did against the Raiders, right? You're going to tell me that Baker Mayfield isn't better than a lot of these quarterbacks that are starting, right? Yeah. And sometimes you have to take a chance. And uh, for the Rams, you know, so far it's working out. But also, um, it pretty much made the Rams a lot more interesting. You know, you're going to watch these games, especially on uh, against Denver on Christmas Day. And so, you know, you want ratings. And Baker Mayfield's yeah. going to give you ratings. Now, the Week 15 games, we got the Niners and Seahawks. Seahawks lose. I think they're out the playoffs because the Niners are going to – I think it's a Thursday night game. They're going to play each other. Yes, it is. Um, I think the Niners are going to beat them. Dolphins and Bills. I think the Bills are going to beat the Dolphins this mm-hmm. time. Last time they played, it was hot in Miami. Mm-hmm. Um, Lions and Jets, who do you think? 
Lions and Jets. I'll, I'll take the Lions. Yeah. Yeah. I seen the Jets play, and you know, just like Buffalo, a lot of these teams start off, you know, but they hit the stride too early. You know, you want to gradually get better, and that's why I think the Niners are so scary because, um, you know, the Niners are starting to kind of ramp it up as the season's starting to um, come to a close. Um, Patriots and Raiders. Belichick versus McDaniel's. I got the Patriots. Oh, easy, easy. Oh, yeah. I. You know, for the Raiders, um. You know the. The Raiders have a lot of talent, but for some reason, it's just not, you know, it's not coming together. But the Raiders don't, um, you know, it goes back to, like I always say, you know, the Raiders got, they got car problems. Um, <laughs> so he's doing it again. Yeah. He did it again, you know. Bengals and Buccaneers. I got, even though the Buccaneers just lost 35 to 7. I'll I take the Bengals. You think so? Yeah. I, I, I The Bucks aren't that team anymore. I think that it's finally... You know, coming to be a realization that the Beng um the Bengals are starting to to make their move, and I think the Bucks are they pretty much went as far as they could go. I, I don't think anyone fears Brady anymore, although he has his accolades are you know unbelievable. But I, I just don't see them as a special team anymore. Um, we got the Giants and the Commanders playoff implications. Boy, that's gonna be a Last good time game. they played, it was a tie. Yeah, I like the Commanders. I like the Commanders. Yeah, but um. The Giants played okay, but you got to play four quarters. And sometimes, you know, when you watch their games, you see a lot of teams that don't, you know, don't sustain that type of intensity for four quarters. Um, yeah. Oh, I got to give a shout out. I met a Rams fan. Big shout out to um, Christopher Shy from the 916 Sacramento Booster Club. He sees me in the tailgate line. He always says, what's up? So I'm going to give a shout out to, I believe, Christopher Shy from the 916 Sacramento Booster Club. Sacramento. He's a lifelong Rams fan from all the way from Anaheim. He drives all the way from Sacramento. Oh, wow. yeah, yeah. That's up. Takes him about three days, he said. He's never been to St. Louis, but he went to Anaheim. He's a season ticket holder. He comes down here every time. Also, we have a special guest joining us today, Ramator. Oh, yeah. Ram yeah. From, uh, Ramator, yeah. yeah sports, uh, the sports, Rams sports. Yeah, he was yeah, uh, Ram the Rams, LA Rams, yeah. uh, um, you know, fan of the year yeah, nominee. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I definitely. To... Yeah, I like his. Um, can't wait to see what he has to say. Oh, yeah. I like his uh, his, his costume and, his, and costume. Uh, his energy, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's definitely much needed. And also, I think that he, you know, represents the Rams really well. So it's going to be exciting to see. Hopefully, he, you know, does win um, Fan of the Year. Yeah. He's deserving of it. I'm glad that, uh, you know, I think he really represents Ram fans really well. Yeah, so let's cut to that footage right now for Ramator. Let's do it. Let's welcome our guest, Rams Fan of the Year, as well as elite super fan, Ramator. Let's do it. Thank you much. Thank you much. So, Ramator, how did you get Ram Fan of the Year? Oh, wow. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm very still at all. You know, it's just basically a, a fan based award. I'd like to thank all the fans out there, Los Angeles Rams also, front office, uh, for believing in me and, and uh, putting the nomination forward. So with the nomination, are you allowed to attend the Super Bowl or how does it work? You know, I, I actually have uh, two seats, one for myself and one for Me? my son. Oh, uh, oh, oh. Got you though, got you. Oh, oh. You know, so we're going to have that opportunity to be able to attend the Super Bowl. Um, who knows? Hey, we might be there. <laughs> Nobody knows. You can't count us out after our, our Thursday game with the Raiders. You know, anything's possible at this point but uh, no the blessing is is uh, miraculous to to have the opportunity to attend super bowl uh be involved with the nfl's honors uh, 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 dinner and all the activities that uh you know they put uh before us so we're very grateful we'd like to thank uh the nfl captain morgan too as well uh for uh you know just just doing everything that they did uh uh for my nomination uh that was a great statue that uh, uh, was revealed at the game and, and I'd like to thank them once again you know for that uh, <laughs> beyond life-size statue. Um, how many fans are nominated around the tour? Uh, there's 32 teams okay. so all 32 fans you know uh, there's someone who's representing you know their fan base. Okay. Um, do you know all of them or do you talk to them or do you know any of them personally? or is it You know we have uh, elite super fans we have uh, nine uh, nominations uh, that I'm aware of. I don't know uh, all their names. Um, however, you know, we're we're right now we're we're in communication with each other, you know, uh, via uh, text and email. So everyone's, uh, you know, they're all excited. We're all, I mean, ecstatic about you know the opportunity, you know, to represent each of our teams. So we're we're, we're very grateful. 
And what you guys also don't know, I'm a lead super fan as well. That's right. He nominated me a while ago. I got the patch, I got that, but I don't have a costume. How can I get a costume? How can I can't go to the Super Bowl with you? <laughs> I, I, I think that uh, if I uh, let you go, <laughs> Guess what, everybody? I'm gonna find my way to the Super Bowl. I'm gonna give me a costume. Don't tell them. <laughs> hey, man, appreciate you joining us. Good luck with everything, man. Appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you.